Hi, this is Dennis Gage. Thanks for tuning in to My Classic Car, home of the Certified Car Nut. Welcome to the 18th annual British Motor Car Day held in Brazelton, Georgia at the beautiful grounds of the Chateau Alain Winery and Resort. If you appreciate the classic design of British automobiles, you're going to love this show. There are over 500 motor coaches here today with names like MG, Austin Healey, Jaguar, Lotus, Aston Martin, and those little flying lunch boxes, the Mini Cooper. Joining me now is Ken Yokelson, co-coordinator of this beautiful event. Welcome, Dennis. Ken, what a beautiful place to have a show. It really is. Uh, we've been up here for 16 years. It started down in Atlanta with 35 cars, and we're expecting over 500 today. And moving on up to the Chateau Elan. Yes, yes. No, it's, uh, it's been gorgeous. It's, uh, it's probably the venue is probably half the reason the people come out. Well, now, you are also associated with a couple charities with this event. Yes, uh, the British Motor Car Club, which is made up of the Atlanta British Car Clubs, um, took over the show in 92. And we have, it's a charity event we give to the uh, Shriners Children's Hospital and the Marriott Alliance Club. Oh, that is just wonderful. And, you know, the other thing is, I mean, the cars are still streaming in. I don't see many of them coming off trailers. Most of them appear to be driven here. About 90% are driven. About the only reason they're not driven is it's pretty far drive from like Charlotte or North Carolina, so they trailer them in. But it's not a concourse show. It's really a giant uh, picnic for British car enthusiasts and spectators. Man, that is just, that is just wonderful. And I also see, <laughs> These Mini Coopers always did crack me up. I see a lot of them around today. Well, we got a lot today because we got a little surprise. Uh, BMW is remaking the Mini, as you know, and uh, it's coming in this country in March of 2002. However, we convinced them to bring it to this show to unveil it today. Oh. And we were wondering if you would help us unveil it. Just try to keep me away from that. <laughs> well, good. Ken, I got to get around and look at some of these. Great. I got to see that new Mini. I, I can't wait. Sounds good. I love my classic car. The Chateau Elan was the perfect location for this unusual car show down in the heart of Dixie. You normally don't think of British sports cars when you think of Brazelton, Georgia. But for the past 18 years, British motor car enthusiasts have flocked to this small town and the luxurious grounds of the Chateau Elan. So Doug, this is a Triumph 3A, 59, 60? Right, it's actually built in 59, but it wasn't sold until 60, so it's titled as a 60. And that, that's what they did back then, right? That's very common, yeah. So you've been with Triumph for a while. You actually raced one of these Had back. a 58 new uh, in the Washington, D.C. area and raced it to SCCA racing, and it was almost identical to this one. That's where the idea for this one came from. It's, it's a, it's a great-looking car, and this would have been built pretty true to how you did it, eh? Yeah, the car itself right now looks exactly like the 58. In fact, we've got pictures of it that look just like this, number and everything. Everything's the same. But. So you raced it. Were you, I mean, were you pretty competitive? Did you win a lot? Yeah, we, we stayed, you know, in the races, but we didn't make a lot of... But you had fun. Trophies or anything. Got a few. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we had a wonderful I time. I love the helmet. Thank you. That's an original 1958 Bell helmet. Wow. That really? set you back in, in 58? 40 bucks, 40 believe bucks? it or not. Yeah, it was heavy money. No yeah. Days. <laughs> well, the car was only what? 2400 for the whole car. <laughs> well, That's that right. was a big investment. That well, let's, sure let's look at the 3A's engine. Okay. But you had to open it, well, you had a T key you to open it. You got to have right? a key to open it, that's right, that's the trick. You get, take the little key and turn a quarter turn. Oh, that's nice. And then lift it up. Oh, man. So, so did they come with diehard batteries in the... <laughs> no, they no. came with Lucas batteries. That's a, that's a modern uh, addition, as are the Weber carburetors. Uh -huh. uh, now, you, that would have originally had, what, SUs on would it? Would have had SUs on it, yeah. It's fairly powerful, real noisy. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we have a lot of fun. It's great. You know, you may have to zip the other side of that uh, tunnel cover off. Take me for a ride later. I think we can work that oh, out. Yeah. You stand the noise. <laughs> I can stand the noise. All right, but I'm tough. Good I enough. can take it. I hear you. Thanks a lot. Thank Thanks. you. The air was filled with the sounds of authentic Scottish music, and numerous British flags were waving. A 64 Aston Martin DB5, James Bond's car. Is this his very car? Well, no, not exactly, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's one of only 800 DB5 coupes. So it's a pretty rare car, and it's a, it's a sister to 007's car, I guess. Everybody knows the Bond connection, but there's really a lot to the, to the DB5 story design-wise, isn't there? People that don't look past James Bond don't know about the 1959 Le Mans win with Carroll Shelby driving the car and the, the world championship they won that year with Sterling Moss's help. 
and uh, the fact that the bodies are all aluminum, handmade. And it had a lot of uh, engineering features that were kind of ahead of their time too, didn't they? It did. Uh, back in an era where front disc brakes were considered cool, this had them front and rear. What power is a DB5? Can we open it up? Absolutely. It's a um, inline six cylinder engine, aluminum block and head, four liters, 282 horsepower, three carbs. Big SUs, huh? They're two inch SUs. Same carburetor E-Type uses. The block is aluminum rather than, than cast iron has steel sleeves in it. Now you actually, uh, you actually drive this car, right? I do, I put two or 3,000 miles a year on it and, uh, and it holds up well with modern traffic between the disc brakes and the five speed. It's a very capable car. It's a great car. Well, of course, and, and you're sitting right beside the, the new, the new DB7, and this is a beautiful car. Now, the DB7's a wonderful car. It's, it's a wash with leather and wood and all the things that make an Aston Martin great. It's got reminiscent styling features, as side vents and the grill. Shows you uh, that where this very modern car came from. Came from. I'd take either one, frankly. I, you know, <laughs> in a heartbeat. <laughs> no, it's really beautiful. Both well, thank of them. Thank you very and, much. And and great to be driving this thing. I'm so glad to see that. Well, thanks Lord. for coming out to the show. We're having a great time. I wouldn't have missed this one. In 1968, Chrysler Corporation went to the drag races with an ultralight Dart powered by a huge 426 Hemi engine. Although Chrysler designed the Hemi Dart, the cars were actually assembled by the Hearst Company. Extreme weight-saving measures were taken to lighten the cars as much as possible, such as acid dip body panels, thin stamped steel metal bumpers, fiberglass fenders and hood, and polymer windows. We got a gorgeous day in St. Charles, Illinois, and I'm here with my good buddy John Balo. John, great to see you again. Good to see you, Dennis. And another one of his killer restorations, the 68 factory lightweight Hemi Dart. Absolutely, Dennis. My good friend Pete Matuzic loaned it to us for the day. <laughs> well, now this, this also, I mean, this is the real deal. This is no clone, right? This is an LO23 car from stem to stern, the real deal. How many of these did they build? They built 80 of these, Dennis. Uh, Chrysler actually shipped bodies in white yeah. directly to Hearst and they assembled these drag race cars uh, at the Hearst factory in Detroit. Well now the, the whole thing about lightweights was pulling weight out and moving it around. Exactly, drag racing is all about weight and balance and one of the things that they did with this particular model is to move a lot of weight from the front to the back. Well, they moved a lot of back battery too there. They, they moved a lot of battery <laughs> and they put a very heavy plate underneath it and it really helped the performance and traction in particular. Well now in, in, in pulling weight out of the car then would uh, would this back window have been a lightweight? No, actually they wanted to keep that factory and again, keep the weight in the back of the car. So who built these? These were Hearst built, weren't they? These were Hearst built cars and Hearst actually was commissioned to cut the wheelhouses for larger tires. They uh, installed lightweight corning glass in all four positions. So this isn't Lexan, it's actually... No, this is Corning glass, 90 thousandths thick. Well, what else did they do? I see no back seat. Back seat was eliminated. A lightweight roll bar was installed in the car. Uh, I'm assuming that's, uh, what, a torque flight? Torque flight transmission in this model with the uh, Hearst dual gate floor shifter. Lovely seats. A100 van bucket seats, <laughs> lightweight with lightweight aluminum seat brackets. Now these things actually came with, with a disclaimer, didn't exactly, they? Exactly, Dennis. Right here in the glove box was the uh, not for street use right, and disclaimer. Never went on the street, did they? Oh, not hard. Never, no. <laughs> but I mean, they were. they were. They were meant to go right onto the strip, and, and, and most, most of the time, racers were the ones that bought them, right? Exactly. They went to, directly to the drag racers. In addition uh, to the lightweight seats and other components, we have thin stamped steel doors and no window regulators oh, wow. in this model. We raised the windows uh, with this uh, seat belt. <laughs> And, and what, kind of, what kind of gain do you get in, in pulling weight out of a car? Well, for the rule of thumb is for every 100 pounds you take out of the car, it'll go a tenth of a second quicker. And that's still true today, pretty still much? Still true today. Wow. So they went with, what, fiberglass fenders? Fiberglass front fenders, fiberglass hood. Mm -hmm. They even went so far as to do a thin stamped steel front bumper. Wow, that's no five mile an hour bumper, is no, it? No, <laughs> it sure isn't, Dennis. Well, let's, uh, let's have a look at this monster. Let's take a look at this big elephant motor. Oh, very light hood, isn't it? That's the, that's the idea. I guess that is the point. 
Yeah, how did they ever get that thing shoehorned Well, they in had there? to do a lot of work, Dennis, to get this motor to fit inside the car. Uh, on the right side, the master cylinder is a good example of how they had to build a special relocation block to move it outboard uh, so that uh, the Hemi motor would actually fit in there with the valve covers. And uh, in order for the racers to tune these motors and to remove the valve cover, they had to install those uh, rubber hoses to allow the master cylinder to uh, be laid up on the inner fender panel. Looks like the same ones you'd find down by the brake. Exactly. In fact, it's the same part number. No kidding. Well, it's a, I'm sure it's a radio delete. Is it heater delete car Radio also? delete, heater delete. They didn't want anything they didn't need in the cars for weight savings. Boy. Well, it is. You know, I mean, it's a street legal car. Um, what do you say <clears throat> we take this baby out and, you know, just cruise a little bit? You don't have to ask me twice, Dennis. <laughs> Joy riding in a dragster. I, I like that. Well, we can sure do that. Well, let's pin it down because I don't think this would stay long otherwise. Well, I don't feel like repainting this hood either. <laughs> A beautiful sunny day and a straight stretch of blacktop was the perfect setting to take this bad boy out for a spin. Many, many magazine articles have been written about this car. How many of these are surviving? Well, that's really a hard number. I'm not sure anyone really knows um, how many are really uh, around anymore. With these 488 gears, it ought to be a loud ride, Dennis. No, obviously no power steering there either. No power steering, again, you know, that weight factor. Uh, we don't want to be putting anything on that we don't need to go in a straight line. So how far back did you have to bring this? Uh, this car was actually still in the Speedwind Motors uh, colors with oh. the lace paint. We chemically dipped the car body, went through a complete restoration, and Pete really wanted to uh, restore it in this B5 blue color, personal preference, and uh, it was a total 100% uh, ground up restoration. And was this, was this the stock hood? That's what these came with? This exactly, that is the stock hood. They left the factory with two vertical uprights on the scoop to hold the scoop down because they catch so much air. Uh -huh. During the course of drag racing, most of the racers actually added two and three more supports because at really high, as these cars started to approach, you know, 120, 30 miles an hour, the scoop would rip right off the hood. Okay. Exactly, so they had to support it. does it. <laughs> John, this car is insane. Dennis, it is the ultimate fun ride, isn't it? I can't believe this is a factory built machine. What a killer. It's a lot of fun. Now um, I think it's your turn to drive it. If you insist. I, oh, I, 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 must. Won't, I won't pass this one up. Oh man. What a machine. <laughs>